Hello, my name is Rick Pearson and welcome to Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. You know, we hear the phrase today from politicians that they're following the science, but with regards to the Bible, is it possible that they might have the cart before the horse? Stay tuned, you're gonna be amazed at what we have to teach today. Welcome back, folks. You know, for those of you new to our program, we'd like to encourage you to join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. for a Bible study podcast with live chat, answering many of the questions our viewers have. And you can join us at our website, or you can send us your email address, and we'll be sure to send you our weekly link for that particular Bible study podcast. You know, when I was a child, I sat in Sunday school classes, and I was amazed by the miracles that are documented in Scripture. The Bible says that Jesus walked on the water, He healed the sick, raised the dead, He opened blinded eyes, He cast out devils, and even the wind obeyed His voice. However, I was also taught that the day of miracles was over. God did that through Jesus and through His disciples, so they told me, in order to get the world's attention to confirm that Jesus had actually been sent by God. It confirmed to his generation that he was God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. His disciples declared that even the wind obeyed his voice. Now, after Jesus died and rose from the dead and then departed, God continued working through his disciples, which Mark later wrote, that God worked with them, confirming the word with signs following. However, somewhere along the line, after that last disciple passed away, John, theologians got the idea that the day of miracles was over, that God no longer wanted to do signs and miracles and wonders. Apparently, theologians decided that signs and wonders and miracles were no longer necessary. But sickness still occurs, blindness still occurs, Infirmities still occur. And where are those devils that Jesus cast out? Are they not still here? Is it possible that in our modern theology and intellectual interpretation, we've reached a position similar to the sons of Sceva, who when actually confronting evil, the demons literally spoke and said, Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but who are you? Listen to this, and we'll be right back. The Bible talks about two spiritual kingdoms that are presently at war on this planet. God's kingdom has existed forever, but Satan's kingdom had a starting point. To find this starting point, we must look at several passages of Scripture that give us a general concept of the origin of Satan and his kingdom. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub, I have set thee so. According to Webster's Dictionary, the name Lucifer means light-bearing covered in precious jewels and created with musical instruments in him. Lucifer must have been an awesome sight. As the glory of God shone into Lucifer, he reflected this glory with his body. His music and his brilliance were combined for the purpose of honoring the Father who had created him. It's interesting to note 
that just as the Bible declares that Babylon has fallen, has fallen, and become the habitation of devils, so it was with Lucifer. Isaiah described Lucifer's fall from the kingdom of light when Lucifer's pride had gotten the best of him. It was at this time that Lucifer set up his own kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. In these end times there are spiritual entities from the kingdom of darkness that are on assignment to come against the commandments of God. These spirits seek to control individuals, families, cities, states, and even nations in opposition to God's kingdom of light. They attempt to dominate man by putting thoughts into his mind that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. On the Isle of Patmos, John was told by an angel that Satan's plan for world control would be as follows. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. These ten kings, or what we might refer to as a new world order, will make war with the Lamb, and that war will be a war of words. Words of deception versus words of truth. Welcome back, folks. You know, today we hear the term in politics, follow the science. But perhaps we should be following the money in order to discern the agenda of those who are hiding behind what they call science. We might be better off to do that. We might be better off, in fact, to follow the agenda follow the moral ethics of those in power, and you will find the root cause of their thinking. When secular humanism mocks believers, placing science above biblical scripture, the Bible says that the wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with, his, with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. In unveiling the 53 descriptions of Babylon the Great, which America has already fulfilled, we find that Isaiah prophesied about Babylon, Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Of course, Chaldeans in this verse refers to wanderers, astrologers, and demons. But Isaiah goes farther and he says, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, Thy wisdom and thy knowledge it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Harper's Bible Dictionary says that when it comes to the word wisdom, it's talking about technical skills, government protocol, and the pursuit of a lifestyle of proper ethical conduct. Webster's Dictionary says wisdom is a synonym for science. Harper's Bible Dictionary says that knowledge is a personal relationship along with intellectual understanding. It's the same word used in Genesis to describe the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So in rephrasing this verse in the modern vernacular, we could read thy technical skills, ethical conduct, and thy knowledge or personal relationship an understanding of good and evil, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. At that point, good becomes evil, and evil becomes good. When you hear politicians say that they're following the science as a prelude to opposing those who follow their faith, it's the most telltale sign of a nation leaving godly principles based on the moral an ethical protocol the nation is exhibiting. Now Lucifer said in his heart, I will be like God. Babylon says in her heart, I am and none else beside me. 
Lucifer looked at the giftings, the rubies, the jewels, and heard the sound of the music coming out of him and said, I don't need God. Babylon, in turn, looks at the technical skills, the science, and the wealth that God has given her instead of the God who gave her those things. The Bible says that those things pervert her, and she says, I don't need God. You know, the word perverted in this uh, text means corrupted thee. Those things have corrupted thee. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Science was not invented by man. It was discovered by man. Lucifer did not create his body, his rubies, his jewels. God did. But just as Lucifer looked at the gifts and started worshiping them, so Babylon looks at her gifts, forsakes God, who is the giver of all good gifts. So what does Scripture say about mankind when they make plans that don't include God? What does God think about the science that they cling to instead of clinging to the God who gave them the science? Stay tuned, folks. You'll be surprised to learn that science does not oppose Scripture. It literally embraces it. We'll be right back. History records that the greatest exodus in the Bible was led by Moses. But according to Scripture, another exodus is coming. It's bigger, better, and is beyond any other mystery that is contained in Scripture. But how does the United States of America play a pivotal role in this unfolding mystery? Prophecy USA is proud to present the latest book by Rick Pearson, The Coming Exodus Unveiling America's Future. This exciting and timely new book is coming soon. And now, when you send a gift of $35 or more, plus shipping and handling, you will receive the book, The Coming Exodus Unveiling America's Future, as soon as it's available. Call today, 1-888-306-1759, or visit prophecyusa.org to be one of the first this October to unravel one of the greatest mysteries in Scripture. Welcome back, folks. We just learned that there are two kingdoms at war on this planet. One is a kingdom of lies, deception, and is steeped in human logic that claims to be following the science. However, that science always seems to have a money trail leading to a different agenda. And that agenda always quotes debatable facts. And most of the time, secular humanists who deny the existence of God try to use science as a way to disclaim God's existence. But the Bible has some insights that most of the scientific fact quoters won't discuss. Scripture says that God is a spirit, and when He created man, He breathed His spirit into man, and man became a living soul. However, Scripture also says that God is light. James 1.17 refers to God as the Father of lights. And when Jesus came, He told His disciples that He was the light of the world. John described heaven as a city that did not need the sun, for the glory of God is its illumination. From a very simplistic explanation, we all know that tiny particles called molecules make up every tangible object. According to scientific study, a single molecule can vibrate in various ways, and each of these different motions is called vibration mode. Molecules move or vibrate at different speeds within various things. When the molecules of a liquid get so cold that they slow down enough to hook onto each other, they form a solid crystal. In other words, the liquid molecules slow down into a solid form called ice. One scientific magazine explains other transformalities of liquid matter this way. 
If you heat a liquid like water up high enough, the molecules will move around so fast that they can't even hold on to each other at all. When this happens, all of the molecules go flying apart and become a gas, like when you boil water to make steam. The process of gas molecules leaving the liquid to go into gas is called evaporation. The opposite is called condensation. As the molecules of water move at different speeds, they cause a change in the appearance of that substance. We can observe the substance when the molecules move slowly in water or in ice, but they're invisible in the atmosphere when they're accelerated to a higher speed. Now also, according to scientific data, the speed of light particles is 186,000 miles per second. Since the metaphorical substance of light is used to describe God's spiritual substance, His Spirit theoretically moves at that speed. That speed is impossible for the human eye to see. However, when Moses stood in God's presence in front of the Father of Lights, it stated that the children of Israel saw the face of Moses that, that his skin shone and Moses had to put a veil upon his face. Since angels are ministering spirits, we cannot see them unless they slow down the molecular structure of their bodies and reveal their presence to us. Since we can only see in a three-dimensional plane of height, width, and depth, and within a certain molecular speed of molecules, it does not allow us to physically see into that realm or into that dimension of the spirit realm. The late Dr. Cho of Korea, in his book called The Invisible Realm of the Fourth Dimension, states that it's the invisible fourth dimension where all spiritual warfare takes place. In studying the theory of matter and antimatter, we have the same parallel. Matter is made up of particles, which are broken down into atoms, molecules, protons, and neutrons. However, instead of seeing matter as we explained above, this time we will look at it with the sensation of touch instead of sight. When molecules move slowly enough, as in the case of ice, we're unable to put our hands into it because the surface of that object is hard. When the molecules are sped up or accelerated, that matter or substance changes so that we can walk into it and right through it, as in the water in the, in the atmosphere. In the case of vapor, where the molecules are sped up even further, we actually live in it and breathe in those molecules. But how can we be certain that certain particles exist? We simply need to look at the science. So stay tuned, folks. You're going to be amazed at the scientific forensic evidence of the past, the present, and the future miracles that awaits those who faithfully follow the words of this amazing book that we call the Holy Bible. Be right back. Hello, folks. Karen and I would like to personally thank you, our prayer partners, and our monthly supporters, who are helping us spread God's word concerning America's role in Bible prophecy. In order to help you reach friends and other loved ones with this teaching, please listen to this very special message. In these end times, it is more important than ever to reach the lost. That's why Rick and Karen Pearson have assembled all of their teaching into this powerful study kit. For a gift of just $200 plus shipping and handling, Prophecy USA will send you a free study kit of five books, five study guides, and a DVD teaching aid discussing each chapter. Or for a gift of just $375 plus shipping and handling, you will receive a free study kit of 10 books, 10 study guides, and two DVD teaching aids. Call today at 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org to send your gift and begin sharing these important prophetic teachings.
Welcome back, folks. We've been talking about the speed of molecules within all substances and how that speed can transform that substance from one mass to another, like ice to water or to vapor. One of the greatest mysteries in Scripture is the description of when Jesus suddenly appeared to his disciples when they were inside a house with the door shut. Luke 24 says, And as they spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. But they were terrified and affrightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Now Jesus showed them his hands and his side to prove that he was not a ghost. Then in verse 42, it says that they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of honeycomb, and he took it and he did eat it before them. This person, Jesus, was the resurrected Jesus who appeared before them. He showed them his scars from his crucifixion, and even Thomas the doubter fell to his knees to worship the Savior. But how did Jesus suddenly appear in the midst of them? Is it possible that the kingdom of God inside Jesus, the spirit man, took dominion over the molecular structure of his body and accelerated it to the speed of light. And as his biological molecules accelerated to that speed, they took on the same antimatter substance as his spirit. And he could literally walk through the walls of the house. Once inside, Jesus slowed down the molecular structure of his body and he became visible to his disciples. This type of body is that which the Bride of Christ will receive as she mysteriously is taken from this planet and will be the only generation not to experience death. In 2012, one of the world's most robust experiments took place in Geneva, Switzerland with a 17-mile-long Hadron Collider, also known as an Atom Smasher. Now, at the end of their multi-billion dollar experiment, we read this. To the cheers and standing ovations, scientists at the world's biggest atom smasher claimed the discovery of a new subatomic particle on July 4, 2012, popularly calling it the God Particle, that helps explain what gives all matter in the universe size and shape. You know, science has finally unraveled the mystery that the Bible predicts. Behold, I show you a mystery. Not only have we unveiled who Babylon is, but we've also unveiled the science behind this verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Is it possible that at the sound of that trumpet, the God particle inside each and every believer will instantaneously accelerate every molecule in your body to the speed of light? Time will be no more. The laws pertaining to the third dimension in which we presently live and see will be changed according to John. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We will attain the same resurrection body that Jesus Christ now has. Philippians 3 says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Perhaps one of the greatest mysteries yet to be fulfilled in Scripture is the event known as the catching away. Although many theologians have different views on the timing of the catching away, few dismiss that it is a future event that is well documented in Scripture. It is an event that has not yet taken place. But as America fulfills her role in Bible prophecy, it will play a pivotal role in end-time events. Paul said, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord 
shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The mystery of the catching away, although not yet fulfilled, follows another mystery that we at Prophecy USA have been teaching for many years. This event known as the rapture will take place immediately before the marriage supper of the Lamb begins. However, according to scripture, that marriage will only take place after Mystery Babylon the Great has been destroyed by fire. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, Babylon the Great, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. The only nation in the history of the world that has fulfilled all 53 descriptions of Babylon the Great is the United States of America. Babylon is no longer a mystery. Let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Folks, science does not oppose God nor the Bible. It merely answers the mysteries that have been hidden in Scripture since the Bible was written. There is nothing new under the sun. Jesus Christ is above all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Folks, science does not oppose the Bible. Science only embraces what the Bible has already taught us. But unfortunately, we're out of time, folks. This is Prophecy USA, and my name is Rick Pearson, and I'm reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive, and he's coming back much sooner than many people realize. See you next week on Prophecy USA. Shalom. Shalom.